few months ago, our wildlife camera traps picked up an aardvark outside the bedroom window one night. A few nights later, it came to the bird bath outside my office window. We knew it was around during the time when the house was being built, inhabiting the burrow at the front of the house, just outside the spare room window. But it was not seen since we moved in back in September of last year. So I looked around the property just in case there might be other burrows that it was living in. But for a long time, I didn't find anything. Then one day, just in front of the swimming pool in the sandy soil of the riverbank, we found a new burrow. I was hopeful that it might be a new hole made by the aardvark. So I pulled out a camera trap. So here's one of the cameras set up to capture, hopefully, the aardvark. We'll see in the morning. And guess what? On the first night, the camera captured it entering the burrow. So let's learn a bit about aardvarks and then see what the camera trap revealed over the following few weeks. I want to just a little bit talk about aardvarks before we get into what we found with our camera traps. Um, now the aardvark's a medium-sized mammal with a stout pig-like body, long snout with a sensitive nose, and large erect ears. It has a predominantly grayish-brown wrinkled skin. Although the skin is mostly bare, it seems like younger individuals can be quite hairy. Its powerful limbs, equipped with strong claws, enable it to dig extensive burrows for shelter and other things. These burrows often are taken over by other animals who spend time in the burrows, as we shall discover shortly. Now, aardvarks inhabit a range of habitats, including savannas, grasslands, forests, and even arid regions. They're most commonly found in sub-Saharan Africa, where they're distributed across numerous countries from South Africa all the way up to Sudan. Um, the aardvark is the only living species of the order Tubulidentata, although other prehistoric species and genera of this order are known from the fossil record. Uh, genetic studies have provided insights into the evolutionary relationships of aardvarks and places them in the same clade as elephants, manatees, and hyraxes. This clade is known as Afrotheria or Afrotherians. Despite being fairly common, aardvarks are rarely seen by humans due in part to their nocturnal habits. We've noted the one on our property leaving the burrow any time after half an hour before sunset into the early night. Their long tubular snout and elongated tongue facilitate efficient foraging for insects, especially the ants and termites that are probably their most common food. They are solitary creatures that come together only during the mating season. Female aardvarks give birth to a single offspring after a gestation period of approximately seven months. Uh, the young aardvark remains in the safety of the burrow for the first few months of its life relying on its mother's care and nourishment. Uh, the name aardvark is from the Afrikaans word meaning ground pig, although a pig it is certainly not. Now that we know a bit about aardvarks, let's look at what happened to the aardvark burrow over a two-week period or so. When we found the aardvark burrow, I was so happy to have this strange animal living next to the house. I put out a couple of camera traps and left them around the entrance hole to see what happened. For the first few days, the hole was only used by the aardvark, and there was optimism that it might stick around. But after a few days, the warthogs began sniffing around. One tried to enter the hole head first, uh, but it couldn't fit that way, so it turned around and backed in. At first, it seemed like they were just trying it out, and they didn't stay. They took turns backing into the hole. The aardvark was still using the hole for a few more nights after I first saw that, but then the warthogs seemed to take over the hole. I had a feeling that it might be connected into what was the warthog's alternative burrow system that was under the same area and with an exit nearby. But I've not been able to determine whether or not this is actually the case. I'm unable to tell whether the aardvark left first and then the warthogs moved in or whether the warthogs moved in and then the aardvark left. We do know from previous camera trap observations that the use of particular burrows seems to be quite dynamic in the system. Anyway, once the aardvark left, I put out three camera traps and didn't see it again for about two to three weeks. Interestingly, the warthogs also seem to be intermittent users of the aardvark uh, burrow entrance as well. 
even without the aardvark being around. The burrow entrance was checked out a few times by porcupines, but they're still using the burrow at the front of the house, and they didn't move in to the aardvark hole. Uh, aardvarks are mainly solitary wanderers, and I was sure that it has other options, and that one day it would be back, and we would see it again. First, let's have a look at other animal activity around the burrow entrance. Warthogs are not the only animals that one can see around there. Uh, during the day, there are often birds around the entrance hole. These include Natal spurfowl and various doves. There was even an African tree squirrel that went into the hole to check it out. On two different occasions, I saw a small rodent-type creature run into the hole, though I have no idea of what it was. It just moved too fast. Um, at night, the entrance is often inspected by Cape porcupines, as I mentioned, but so far none of them have tried to move in. Sometimes the camera trap picks up bats flying around the hole, catching insects, presumably the Mauritian tomb bats that shelter under the eaves of the house. One night, a young honey badger checked out the hole and appeared to almost fall in before running away. I'm not sure if the warthog did something there that chased it off, but the honey badger did a nice twist and turn uh, in order to run away. There seemed to be one warthog in particular who used the burrow entrance more than the others, and it spent its nights in the burrow, arriving before dark to back into the hole and then leaving again in the early morning. What a surprise one day last week when the camera traps picked up the aardvark walking past the braai area or barbecue area for those of you not in South Africa. Um, the next day, I pulled one of the unproductive camera traps and moved it back down by the burrow entrance. Sure enough, the aardvark was back. The next day, the camera picked it up, leaving the entrance hole just before sunset. It was quite special to be able to catch it out in the daylight and to be able to see its colors. Um, the light of the sinking sun through the skin of its ears was quite nice to see. It stayed around for a few days, and I was hoping that it would find a mate. It's almost that time of the year. Um, typically, it left its burrow in the time just before or just after sunset and returned sometime during the night, often around 3 in the morning. Uh, one thing to note about aardvarks is that telling males from females is not an easy thing to do. Firstly, they're not sexually dimorphic, so there are neither obvious size nor anatomical differences between the sexes. Secondly, it's also virtually impossible to distinguish males from females in the field by trying to observe their gen genitalia. Both males and females have a prominent scent gland that looks a lot like a scrotum. And these scent glands are frequently interpreted as such and invariably they help to misidentify the male in the field. Uh, thirdly, in male aardvarks, the testes remain inside the body, even in mature males. So male aardvarks do not have a scrotum, a thing that they share in common with other Afritharians. So there is no obvious way for me to know whether the aardvark that spends time on our property is male or female. Uh, the aardvark has more turbinate bones and olfactory bulbs in its nose than any other mammal, and a strongly developed olfactory lobe in its brain, providing it with excellent sense of smell. It could be that aardvarks don't need visual cues for sex identification, since it probably lives in a world of enhanced scent, something that is obvious when you see it sniffing as it exits the burrow. This time, the aardvark stayed around for a few days. Warthogs were not seen entering the burrow this time, and after a few days, the aardvark disappeared again, and once more, the warthog returned for a little while and then disappeared itself as well. For the last few days, the hole seems to be empty. We're still watching, and we still have three cameras out every night trying to learn more about the wildlife around our house. So stay tuned for more. There will be more. 